Welcome to the DFO Rundown Podcast with Frank Saravalli and Jason Greger on dailyfaceoff.com. Delivered by DoorDash. Welcome to episode 120 of the DFO Rundown. I'm Jason Greger, uh, flying solo today. Uh, Frank is off for the uh, weekend because it's his uh, father's 60th birthday and they're on a golf trip. So uh, nothing better than some father son time. Uh, it's two br- Frank and his brother uh, with their dad. So we'll get the, uh, the rundown of their golf. Uh, Frank, probably as I'm recording this right now, he's likely in the sand or the water. That's just, you know, that's my educated guess on, on where it is. I know the Sarah Valleys love their golf, so that's awesome that they're having a little uh, father-son time this weekend. Uh, today on the DFO Rundown, we're going to quickly get into, uh, you know, the playoff position, some of the storylines. But then we have a very special guest. The first time we're going to Europe live on the Rundown, Vesa Rantanen will uh, join us. He's a longtime uh, sports writer, sports reporter for Ilta, uh, Samantha, the uh, one of the largest news outlets in Finland and uh, big news from hockey, but also of course, with the war going on in Russia and Ukraine and how Russian oligarchs uh, were a big part of uh, Jokerit. And you know, that Jokerit is to, to explain it for North Americans. It's, it's kind of like the equivalent of what, you know, the, the Maple Leafs or the Canadians were to Canadian hockey early on and like the Rangers or the Red Wings, like just one of your staple teams that you're in, little different because there's only 5 million people in Finland, but Joker, it was their national team. Like that was the team that everybody wanted. And it's, it's been stained a little bit uh, since they joined the KHL. They're no longer part of the KHL, but uh, Vesar Antonin, you will not want to miss uh, him and what he talks about today. But before we get to that, of course, uh, NHL playoffs, uh, we are getting closer and closer. We got uh, two weeks remaining in the regular season. And uh, you, you see some teams, the, the East Conference pitcher, we know it's, it's been clear as far as who's in, but the races, oh my goodness, the Rangers and the Hurricanes battling. They each have seven games remaining. Carolina is uh, two points up on the Rangers, who have uh, pulled a little bit away from the Pittsburgh Penguins. And Penguins aren't secured just yet as third, as the Washington Capitals are five points back, but the Capitals have two games in hand. You move to the Atlantic, uh, Florida's locked in, they're finishing first. Uh, Toronto now has a four-point lead on Tampa Bay with eight games remaining, and uh, Tampa is uh, three points up on Boston. So the Atlantic looks fairly close to what we think it's going to be, but really the the race is going to be Boston, Washington, what's going to happen in the the wild card race, where's Pittsburgh going to finish. So there's still no locks for sure on who's going to play. It looked a few weeks ago that Florida and Washington were locked in, but uh, the way Washington... You know, slowly, you know, they're behind Boston now, three points with the games at hand. You know, they could technically only be one back of Pittsburgh. So that race uh, far from done. In the West, Minnesota and St. Louis are locked in a battle for home ice for second place in the Central. They're tied with 98 points. You've got uh, one game in hand for uh, Minnesota. Colorado, of course, is uh, home and away finishing first. Same as Calgary. The uh, Edmonton Oilers are now four points up on L.A. for second place, and they have a game in hand. But where the race really heats up is L.A. 88 points, Vegas 87 points, and Vegas has a game in hand. Also, Nashville and Dallas, the two wildcard spots, they're at 89. So the uh, two wildcard spots and the final spot in the Pacific Division They're all within uh, two points of one another. So it's going to be a fantastic race down the stretch and a huge game this weekend as the Edmonton Orders host Vegas. Uh, Edmonton shut out Nashville last night. Meanwhile, Vegas stomped the Calgary Flames, who uh, they chased Markstrom from the game, for goodness sakes. So uh, could Vegas make a late push? They have a tougher schedule than L.A., but uh, if Frank was here, he'd be like, points percentage, points percentage. They're actually uh, one... uh, one decimal point percentage higher at uh, 0.58 right now for Vegas. So technically, by Frank's world, Vegas is in today. But hey, they got to win their game uh, in hand to uh, to pass the Los Angeles Kings or lose in overtime, and then they would be tied. And uh, Vegas would have the tiebreaker because they have more regulation wins. So there's lots uh, to look for there. The the Rocket Richard race. Leon Dreisaitl scores a hat trick. He's got 19 goals in 20 career games against the Nashville Predators. He's within four of Austin Matthews. So I guess there's an outside chance. Uh, of course, Dreisaitl still in second place behind Connor McDavid. I, I think the Art Ross is likely McDavid's to lose, similar to uh, Austin Matthews down the stretch. The Hart Trophy race, just when you think there's maybe someone running away with it, there isn't. It's still a uh, hotly contested down the stretch. And uh, I, I know the, the two weeks 
that we have remaining in the NHL is exciting to watch for playoff races, for standings, for, for trophies. Uh, early in the year, people thought Patrice Bergeron was running away with the Selkie. Well, look at Elias Lindholm's numbers now suddenly. He's right in that mix. Some might have him as a favorite. So there's lots of races to watch for. We'll get into all of that, maybe more on Monday. But now we are going to be joined by Vesa Rantanen in, in an interview that is not NHL-focused, but very much hockey-focused with some uh, political angles involving Hall of Famers. It's an interview you won't want to miss. Today on The Rundown, uh, we are very happy to have, for the first time, live from Finland, we will have a guest, and uh, we are going to be talking about uh, Finnish hockey, and uh, not only just hockey, but the impact, of course, of, uh, of the Russian invasion on Ukraine and, and how that's impacted uh, Finnish hockey. Of course, the big news earlier this week is that uh, Yari Curry has bought out some of the, uh, the Russian oligarch shares of Jokerit. And what is that going to mean moving forward for that club as we are joined by uh, Vesa Ratinen. He is the editor of Ilta Samanite, uh, the uh, largest news outlet in, uh, in Finland. And uh, Vesa, welcome to the DFO Rundown. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. And I'm really thrilled and, and um, I feel privileged to be part of this. Oh, well, thank happy you. to be here. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Well, that's great. Um, you know, I, I've been, we, we, I have a friend here, a Finnish correspondent, uh, Joni Niemann, who's, who's in Edmonton, and I've been talking to him over the years about the whole Jokerit and when they moved mm -hmm. to the KHL. So I kind of want to go back for our audience a little bit. Um, when Jokerit left Finland and then played in the KHL, the ownership, uh, um, was there always Russian ownership? Like, is that what allowed uh, Jokerit to go to the KHL? Yeah, uh, initially, uh, um, well, I tried to put it shortly. Uh, we had a we had a successful or notorious or known organization, hockey organization in Finland called Jokerit, and and they had the owner Haru Yalis Horakimo, who ran his hockey business and his arena business so bad that he was this close to get go to the bankrupt okay. and he found he he was lucky enough to find a very lucrative buyer who was able to get him off the hook and give him a massive amount of money off the arena which wasn't profitable and off the team which was not profitable either the buyers were russian oligarchs back in 2013 we had no idea i mean some investigative reporters and perhaps some uh, um, scholars at the universities etc or very very highly uh, um, educated politicians perhaps understood that we were dealing with an evil empire uh, the the situation in during these seven eight years has changed drastically right after the war in, uh, started in in february 24th so i guess at the time there were only few people who thought that okay this might not be a good idea to start dealing with russian oligarchs and i personally was completely against the whole deal because first of all they never told the real truth behind it first of all that the team had financial troubles and the arena had financial troubles and the story was told that okay now there's finally a chance for a Finnish marquee team to go to the next level like into the bigger league it would eventually help Finnish hockey a lot partially perhaps it was true too because many players took steps forward when they had a chance to play in KHL but honestly the league wasn't that good it still is not that good and people who knew about the world knew that there's another meaning for the league to stop to be to start with vladimir putin uh started it out he he forced his loyal oligarchs so let's say 20 super rich people who have stolen their money from the country with the help of putin he forced them to put it up because he wanted to have a force against North America. We know from history that how meaningful hockey as a sport has been politically to Soviet Union, even during the Stalin era. He wanted 
the country to to establish a hockey program because unlike soccer it's impossible to to take over the world because it's high, much more competitive but in in hockey he saw a chance that we could you know stick our sword through the heart of capitalism and that's why hockey became very influential very important sport in soviet era and it still is the most popular sport so putin wanted to have a money league in russia and he wanted that for a couple of reasons one why julius caesar had colosseum and 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 gladiators to fight for people because you have to provide top level entertainment for your for your people so they are happy and he wanted to lure all the russian players from nhl he wanted to he wanted to fight with nhl and show that they can put up better league than nhl is well how did that go not well anyway so and also they wanted to expand the west they 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 tried to get te- and they got teams from uh latvia for a moment and from czech for a moment too they tried to go to sweden but sweden uh richer probably more how would i say more confident country they told them that fuck off we don't need you we are not going to give any of our teams to you but finland once again um because one owner had so much power within the circle of finnish in the finnish power circles he was able to convince important people that this deal has to be done and it's a good thing for finnish hockey and that's how it was explained to us but few of us knew that it has nothing to do with hockey it's 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 uh it's a move to save uh on on um educated or not very bad businessman we saved a very bad businessman with a free load of money that came from russia and we all know that money comes from the government always and and the government money is always political we should have seen that we should have known that but we people in sports we are probably the most easy targets to become useful idiots as they say because we sort of kind of think that the sport itself the game itself is somehow sacred or more impo- important so we don't have to look behind the games or the leagues we we are just happy to see some hockey which is really stupid and i'm not very proud of my profession not not here in finland or, or in north america because the real story behind is always more important than any of the goals or highlights or whatever but anyway that's another discussion so they started to play in KHL and and early on there was a lot of excitement back in 2014 13-14 i think was the first season somewhere around there and they were able to provide uh good good solid nights in the big flashy arena and they spent a lot of money to market the team as the, the story early on was that the yogurt will become finland's team it's like second national team the the great adventure in russia etc etc they tried to build the hype but early on we realized that okay the opposing teams on uh, there were only like one or two teams in khl that people in finland who are very hockey educated even knew their names let alone their players they went to see kovalchuk when he played in in petersburg and they went to see moscow teams because they had you know got shit played there etc cetera, etc cetera. but other 25 plus teams were just teams that nobody knew or cared about so they didn't draw too much attention they didn't draw too much audience and biggest news outlets like ours i was editor at the time already i felt hesitant to promote the league because the background was so dirty we all know who have read the history that how putin built his inner circle and his power how he stole the whole country with the help of as they call them loyal oligarchs and and for warning couple of early on 
oligarchs were put in the jail, like Michael Hodorowsky. Some people lost their whole fortunes. And all the money in Russia comes from oil, gas, coal, etc. And all those companies are owned and run and controlled by government. And oligarchs who want to make money in or become an oligarch in Russia, so make millions, you have to deal with Putin. So all the money that you make, all the billions that Timchenko, who's the original uh, buyer and a funder of Yogurit, uh, he knows that I make billion dollars from oil, that I make deals with government. So I, I never own that money. It Half of it is Putin's and half of it is, is government's. And it's going to be used exactly as Putin wants. So anyway, knowing that background and knowing that money is dirty and knowing that it's it the government is it's not a it's not a friendly government it's an evil empire i i always kept a arms distance to joker it uh, after very very early on we didn't cover it too much we i didn't want to be part of the hype because it was it wasn't fair it wasn't open they didn't tell the truth why the team was moved etc cetera, etc cetera. So, so, so 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 with that um, so the last eight years, how is it now? My understanding, reading a lot of your articles, and I was using Google Translate, so I'm not sure how accurate everything is. But you know, over those years, you know, it said that Joker had lost like 80 to 90 million uh, euros, which yeah. is over you know over 100 million uh, Canadian American, yeah. even more American. Um, so wh why were they losing all the money? And what was the purpose then of the lead, of the of the team? Why did everybody keep finding it if it was just a, a money pit? <laughs> because the KHL exists for political reasons, and okay. it's funded from the pockets of the oligarchs who te who who do exactly as Putin says. And the money that the oligarchs have is stolen from the government or the country or the people with permission of Putin. So okay. that's how they they have over the time when Putin has been in power uh, from official economy of Russia uh, reportedly has disappeared more than thousand billion dollars. And that money is banished from official economy. And that money is controlled and owned and put aside by the 20 or 30 loyal oligarchs that run the side economy in Russia. And that's their war chest, by the way. So whatever sanctions we make to Russia, it's not going to stop the war. So people just have to pull their heads out of the, uh, I'm not going to say that word, but, you know, so so the money, the, it, 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 the so-called professional hockey league, KHL, it was never professional hockey league. It has nothing to do with the sport itself. It's run, it's only, it exists because of political reasons. It's soft power to the West. It opens you doors. I'll give you a better example. Uh, we all know Chelsea, Premiership Chelsea owner in London, Roman Abramovich, right? Yeah. He's tr now trying to sell the team because, you know, the war, et cetera, et cetera. Roman Abramovich is one of the original oligarchs already established his billion dollar fortune during the Yeltsin former president time. And he's one of the few original oligarchs who have stayed within the power or the money during the Putin era. So he was put to London by Putin's orders to buy a team because the sport is easiest way to establish yourself. And he was the tunnel for the stolen money from Russia to be spread through the, the, the uh, London um, uh, economy. He, he's the most important vehicle that the stolen thousand billion dollars were able to spread around the West. And was it clear? It's, it's money laundering and nothing else. And KHL is money laundering too. So. Having a league that looks good, shiny pictures, great arenas, one Western team with it, it looks awesome outside. And Russia, like all the dictatorships, always use sport and a lot of money to use sport 
to make themselves look good. So if a Russian oligarch, this time Dimchenko, who's Putin's right-hand man, and they call him his secret banker because he handles all the Putin's personal money, he bought the team from Helsinki to get a better position or to be accepted or, you know, open doors to him and his associates. And at that time, owner, former owner, Harry Harkimo, he was a friend, known friend of president of Finland. So Timchenko and other oligarchs and Kreml thought that, okay, buying Jokerit might be a way to get closer to the president of Finland. It doesn't work that way in Finland, thank God. We are a democracy, so that, that didn't work out. Anyway, they played, they played, and they played, and they made they lo- the, the net losses year in, year out were between 10 and 15 million euros, which is close to 20 million Canadian uh, euros. And man- my uh, majority owner, Harry Harkimo, who owned 51% of the team, never put in a penny. So Russian oligarchs covered all the expenses. And over the course of year years, they lost all together around 80 million uh, uh, euros, which tells you that it has nothing to do with professional sports. It has barely anything to do with sports itself. It was established for different reasons totally, and we don't know what those reasons were. Russian oligarchs now own an arena downtown Helsinki. Yeah, the Hartwall Arena, correct? Yeah, it might be full of Russian tanks in in two years from now, for what we know. Because isn't that, now the Hartwall Arena, and that kind of goes back to, to Jokerit, like, isn't yeah. that where they're supposed to play? And I know the announcement came out this week that, that Yari well, they Curry can't, was... They can't, they can't play there. So the Yari Curry story is another story. So when, okay. when Har- Harakimo was forced to leave the ownership of Jokerit because he was a bad team owner and he's a very bad businessman uh, and the Russians finally realized the oligarchs who get their orders from Kreml always remember that oligarchs realized very soon in few years that all the goals they they set with this whole maneuver to get close to the Finnish president to to establish to, to become very highly touted Russian team owners, with the team that whole country loves. Not, none of those targets, uh, they, they, weren't, they weren't able to achieve any of those goals because people didn't care about Jokerit. People kept writing about their losses. People that kept writing, I, we, did, we kept writing about the, the too close relationship with oligarchs who are with Putin, etc., etc. So they never got the the they ach- n- never achieved those goals. So they let owner minority ma- sorry majority owner Harry Harkimo go, and paid him off, and assigned Yari Kuri as his successor. Harry Harkimo got a couple of million euros for selling the team. But he never paid any of those debts. Yari Kuri became a puppet owner. He probably paid one dollar or one euro. And another Russian oligarch, Vladimir Putanin, became a funder. And it was done differently this time. They had a sponsorship deal because Putanin owns a uh, a factory. Um, what's the word? Nickel? Nickel factory. Is, okay. is that a word? To, do you understand? Well, yeah. Well, well, nickel. Yeah, nickel is yeah. um well, nickel uh, factory in Finland, yeah. which is a Finnish factory. Sure. So they they put that Finnish by the book Finnish factory to become a sponsor of Jokerit, and they kept on covering the losses for two mm. years. So now the war started. There was no excuse for Jokerit to keep doing it. They, I mean, the public opinion, the revealing stories of the press. It, it's just. It's just not right that your your Finnish team plays with the KHL because everybody's eyes have now finally opened. I've been touting this for eight years, and now everybody agrees with me, which is not satisfactory at all because we spent eight years with you know dealing with evil empire and and Finland Finnish league lost one of his its most important teams because of one one man's creed. 
So what? So what it's happens story, now? Sorry. And what happens you know, now? So Yari Curry is now the owner. He hasn't paid a penny. Yari Kuri made some money in NHL, but he doesn't have millions. That's probably the only reason why he hang around so long time. They paid him from three to five hundred thousand euros a year to be an owner. To be an owner, he doesn't have that kind of a money. So he's he's an owner. But but they were able. Oli Karks probably uh, said that okay, we lost eighty million. So what? Keep it, whatever, go away. We don't need you guys anymore. They still own the an- arena, though. But anyway, so now on the books, the team itself is 100% Finnish owned. So there are no strings attached officially. That opens a door for Jokeri to, at some point, uh, join back to Finnish league play in some other league but Finnish league obviously is the uh, the most natural choice for them so this is a great maneuver from whoever whoever did that I know that it's not Yari Kuri because he he could score goals but I don't think he can read too well if that's a nice way to say that person is done anyway uh, he's the owner now he needs to fund the team uh, we don't know what's going to happen with that 80 million euro debt that's officially paid and it's in the books. Somebody has to take care of that. Maybe oligarchs will say that, okay, we don't need it. You, you can keep it. Move forward. That would be a great. So then Jokeric starts. They have no place to play. They don't yeah. have a rink. They don't have a league. They don't have a penny. They need a funding. They need. They need... 10 million euros right off the bat to even build a team and find a place to play. They can't play in Hartwell Arena because it's still owned by oligarchs. And because of the sanctions, nobody can do lawful business with them. The arena can even, can't even be bought from them because of the sanctions. So they are in a status quo in that sense. But they can hang around a year without playing. I think within a year, year and a half, I mean, it would be uh, uh, surreal or unrealistic to even think that Jokerit might be able to play from the start of the next season in Finland. But from the start of the season after that, it might be possible, but it can't be Eric Uri. He can't be an owner because he's not an owner. He's, o- he's, he's a puppet owner. They need 10 million euros, new money to invest. And... I think Yari Kuri unfortunately has tarnished his he has tarnished his reputation Rep- so badly that my personal opinion that I tweeted like a few hours ago that in my personal opinion he should not have he shouldn't be allowed to hold any position none whatsoever within the Finnish sports or hockey at all from this on he his his hands are bloody. So Vesa, um, it's it's interesting because for for a lot of people, maybe in North America, we don't like Joker. It was the prize team really in Finland for the long time. Yes. That was that was the team that everybody wanted to play for. Yes. You grew up if you were a Finnish boy, you know that's the team you wanted to play for. You, you mentioned about how you know they need ten million euros. Is there still the cachet? with Joker it amongst Finnish born people where someone says, Hey, I, I want to, I'll invest because I want to bring this back to the level. Oh, it yeah. was before. There's, there's a, there's a lot of wheel around that. There, there's a lot of money. There's a lot of people who want to bring Joker it back. They want to have a fresh start. Okay. We can, we can put it this way. The people who are deeply involved with Joker it and the journey money, the Joker it was getting over the years, they have to vanish. But the okay. brand itself, the logo and the brand and the organ, uh, the, the, the name of the team, it hasn't. It hasn't. I mean, you can you can relocate the teams. You can put the teams from league to another. Joker, it, I, I don't think that the Joker has ever been as welcomed as it is right now in Finland because the Finnish league, because of the COVID, it has suffered and and everybody, we the Finnish league lost one of its marquee teams when they left. So, of course, they are welcome. Like, imagine this hypothetical, super hypothetical. 
uh, there would be somebody would establish a new hockey league in Moon, and they would lure Toronto Maple Leafs there or Montreal Canadiens, and that and and they would bolt and they would go to Moon to play for a couple of years, and people would first be very very angry, and they will I will never fucking watch any Toronto Maple Leaf game again. Blah 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 blah. After a few years, when your NHL realizes that we're lacking something, we're lacking original six team. This is not the same anymore. You turn around and you're like, okay, can we find a way to bring them back? And okay. now it's now everybody tries to find a way to bring them back. They are more than welcome to come back. But Yari Kuri necessarily is not. The former owner, Harry Harkimo, is not. You know, the key people who have been eating from dirty Russian oligarchs' hands and being puppets of Kreml. I mean, I mean, we are we are we are in intelligent people we are educated people here in Finland we can set we can we don't separate sport and politics we I mean we we can separate them but we can see that there's the more in it than just the sport itself it's it's a stupid it's short-sighted argument to say that you must separate sports from politics because when you deal with evil empire like Russia there's nothing but politics it's the there's there's a little tiny little part of sport among the politics But Jokerit, as an organization, is more than welcome to come back. But can it happen with Yari Kuri? He doesn't have that money. There's money involved, for sure. There's already now a new groups who are, you know, forming groups. Timu Selan, the name has been mentioned. Timu is very possible choice to be, become the next uh, 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 figure. He probably won't have ten million dollars to put in a hockey business because you have to be stupid to do that in Finland to start with. So anyway, but he—he, he, I mean, you can't make money in, in hockey in Finland uh, uh, at least for a long, long time, except, uh, especially with Jokerit because they don't have their own arena. Anyway, anyway, so, there, there's, there's a there's a there's a great chance for Jokerit to re-establish themselves as one of the most important, most followed, most loved, most hated teams in Finnish league. And they will definitely make league better and more interesting. And that's why they're so welcome. So what about, because what's unique about the Finnish system is Jokerit not only has their pro team, but do they not have like yeah. a complete amateur minor hockey they system do. of the kids underneath? So what happens like, to those kids who are in the Jokerit system? Like like every team in Finland, it's a club system team, club system here. So every major league team has all the juniors from from top to bottom. So Jokerit junior organization has been always separate from the okay. professional team. They are different okay. organization, but they are funded. They were funded strongly funded by the oligarchs and by the by the mother team because. The team organization owns the right to the name and the logo. So yes. the KHL team had to make a deal with the junior organization to have a right to use it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like somebody owned the copyright or the right to use the name Leaves or the logo. And if you want to play in NHL with that jersey, you have to pay me, right? Yes. So junior organization got that money from the mother organization who got their money from oligarchs so now it's a question mark how do they fund themselves in the future and where do they practice and play because you can't use the arena anymore they had their practice ring underneath the uh, the big arena there so but eventually most of the junior sports not only hockey but most most of other sports like in Canada is paid by parents so they will find a way and they will be all right it's a it's a very nice It's a fine junior organization. Their their top A team from um, which is a uh, um, uh, major junior team is one of the best teams in Finland. Top three. Their second tier team is one of the best. So so the junior organization is in in very good shape, and it's in very good hands. But they have to cut ties from the Russian money, and the Russian money can't move anymore because of the uh, sanctions. 
So but I yeah. only got two more quick ones for you, Vess. I really sure, appreciate your time. The About the arena, the Hartwall Arena, like um, the, the brewery's name was on there. They took their name off of it from yeah. what I read in, in one of your articles yeah. a while back. Um, yeah. So what, and this is a brand new facility. No, it's not what, brand new. It was built well, back in 1997. Okay. Uh, but it's a Bob. good building. It's yeah, a good, it's, it's, it's almost NHL level arena. It's, yeah. it's 13,000 uh, seats. It's, it's still more than very good arena. So right what's going to happen to it? Like what, what's right what's now it's Rottens. It's Rottens because of the sanctions and because it's owned by Russian oligarchs who are on the sanction list. Nobody can do business with them. First of all, uh, they're going to close the doors on May 1st. They have announced that they are officially going to close the doors and they are waiting for a way for some new investor to buy it. But because of the sanctions, you can't really buy anything from the people who are on the sanction list, right? Mm -hmm. So right now, the best guess is that it rottens away. It sits there and rottens away. You, you, we all know that the building like that, it won't you know, collapse in two years. But if you don't maintain it yeah. constantly and take good care of it, it fastens the, the collapsing process. And right now, they don't, they don't have any money, not, no money coming in. So I don't think they can afford to maintain it for too long. So the future of the building is very, very shady. And the, the laws around and the ways to, ways to buy it. I, I, know that I know that there are groups in Finland who have that kind of money that they are willing to buy it. They are willing to buy it. They are willing to bring Jokerit to play there, which would be a great fit in, in, in many different ways. But right now, when the war goes on, when the sanctions are on, it's practically impossible to lawfully buy the arena. Okay. And now when there's no money and no, there are no concerts, nothing happens in the arena because it's on the sanction, sanction list. There's no money to run it. So it mm. starts to rot and it rottens already. It's now, going to collapse in 10 years if nothing happens. And it might take 10 years because this freaking war might take 10 years. Yeah, well, and that's and I know that if Finland and, and Sweden are seriously considering joining NATO for the first time just to to pr you know protect themselves so they're not in the same situation of Ukraine, which I know isn't sports related, but it's it's pretty scary and life related for sure. Now, one last one about that: there is it true that the practice arena at the Heart Wall is forty meters underground in a rock? Is that true? Yeah, it's uh, I don't know if it's forty meters, but it's underground. It's underneath. I, and it's a very common way to build rings here in Finland. I, I, I spent my childhood playing in a ring like that where I come from, Tampere. There, there's actually four or five rings, practice rings, like, I don't know, 100 meters underground. Now, is, is, that, um, is that due to back in the, in the war when you guys were bombed, you decided that everything's going to kind of almost be like no, a bomb it's, shelter? No, it's only because the land is so expensive. It's easier. It's, it's cheaper to build your ring underneath. Because, you know, you are under your, you already bought the space, the, the crown space, and yeah. the, the land is very expensive, and nobody charges you if you build down. Really? Yeah. Huh. It's, a, it's a cheaper way to build a practice rink than build a rink next to your rink, right? Okay. Just dig it under and put it that there. Hmm. So that's a common practice in Finland is you've got the uh, the underground practice. It's, it's not a common practice. Most likely you want to have your rink on earth, right? Not yeah. underneath, but it's it's done in several occasions. So, and uh, Vesa, I really appreciate this. Uh, you mentioned Yari Anytime. Curry and Yari Curry for the longest time was like, mm. you know, one of the most popular Finnish players of all time, one of the most successful oh, yeah. Finnish players of all time. Yeah. And you know what? He went back. He 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 worked with Finnish hockey for a long time. You mentioned his his reputation has been sullied a little bit because of this. Do you, do you think over time, it's it's able to repair itself? Could he? I'm I'm sure I'm sure, sure, like I'm sure it could. Be, I'm sure it could because he's a Hall of Famer and he's still because of his what he uh, achieved in his career and he's. From head to toe, he's a gentleman. He's a true, very well-mannered gentleman. But if you dig your hands too deep in Ukrainian blood, it takes time to wash them off completely. He, he hasn't been very good at you know, explaining people why he's so heavily involved with the KHL. He was a member of their board, for fuck's sakes. 
He just a week ago resigned from the board. He he hasn't been able to to you know tell firmly that okay this is the war is not a good thing. He I I don't know is is he so dependent on the Russian dirty money or is he just a useful idiot or is he only so freaking dumb that he doesn't understand the big picture but he has completely tarnished his his social reputation his his uh social the the the, the career never goes away the five Stanley Cups never goes away the Hall of Fame placard never goes away but as a human being in today's society he has lost the respect he had because of his sports career and and lastly Vesa in Finland right now can you explain to us we're, we're far away and you know in Canada and North America just how, how concerned you are as, as a Finnish person because you know Russia has invaded Finland before I know there's a long-standing angst between Finnish people and, and Russia and rightfully so I um, mean there's talk of joining NATO how, I know that we're we're here first talking sports, but in the real world, how how concerned are, are Finnish people right now about what's going on around them? Uh, people use tend to go to their everyday lives, and and we are all busy, and we go to work or school, or we have our kids or whatever. But we are scared. We are definitely scared. I am scared. I I I watch the news. I read the stories. I I read the history. I. I probably I'm probably more scared than an average Joe, but it's it's a it's every time we met we meet with the friends it's a, it's a topic we talk about. We have thirteen hundred kilometers of common border with them. We have the history with them, and now that when they have showed, as our president said, their true face, they especially during this process when we have this discussion that should we, you know, apply for NATO membership. And we know that Russia will take aggression to stop that. And, and they, they, it would be totally against them. So the only reason why we haven't put our application in yet is that people on a high political level are hesitant. Because we don't want to make them too angry right now because there's crazy man sitting right by the nuke button. And after what they do and what they still are doing in Ukraine, people don't have any doubts about the cruelness of the country and the army they have. So it's a very big concern and we all are prepared to a long, long haul with this massive problem right around our border. Well, Vesa, we, we wish you all the best. Thank you so much for your honesty you. and, and your candidness. Uh, thanks for joining us on the DFO Rundown. You're there. You're our first live from Finland guest, so I really appreciate that. And uh, we, we Call hope me again. to talk to you Anytime. again Anytime. You betcha. Anytime. Vesa Rantanen, our guest today on the DFO Rundown. I thought it was important to talk about what's going on in Helsinki and, and for hockey, but then obviously there's the political landscape and you know uh, Vesa, we wanted him on because he's very honest and uh, he didn't pull any punches. That was that was very insightful on, on what's going on. And you know, hopefully Jokerit can get back playing, but uh, as Vesa said, for the right reasons with the right people running it. And uh, it's a reminder in sports that you know what's going on in, in Russia has has huge impacts not just politically, but also in a lot of different sporting events uh, in Finland and other neighboring countries. So uh, Frank will join us again on uh, Monday. I hope you all have a wonderful uh, Good Friday and Easter weekend. And then good luck with the egg hunt uh, with all your kids. Hopefully the Easter Bunny makes it challenging for you. And uh, we'll talk about a weekend and we'll see where the playoff races are on Monday.